For a long time, there's been a consensus among economists that how much you tax people actually has very little effect on how much they work. I personally believe that there are biases in previous results that have caused them to underestimate the effect of taxes on work effort. There's really no more important issue in economics. You have the government, uh, which can do good things, like provide education, provide health care, but that costs money. You have to tax people to pay for it, and that damages the economy, potentially. It may reduce the amount people work and shrink the whole pie. There's always this tension in economics between government wanting to provide more of the good stuff it can provide versus the detrimental effects of the taxes. Now that, that's actually why labor supply elasticities are a very important uh, issue. What we mean by that is how much work effort or work hours are reduced when you tax people at a higher rate. If they continue to work a lot when you tax them a lot, uh, then government can supply tons of good stuff, tax people really heavily to pay for it, and nothing will go wrong. On the other hand, if labor supply elasticities are big, uh, then when you tax people a lot, the economy will shrink a lot, uh, and, and you'll have a debacle. The consensus view in the economics profession, until rather recently, has been that tax effects on work effort are pretty small, which means that you could, uh, you could go ahead and tax people quite a bit. The Higgs elasticity is a constant. Many years ago when the economists first started studying the allocation of work hours over the lifetime, they were using models that ignored human capital accumulation. By human capital, we mean your, your skills and your experience. And of course, experience builds skills, right? as does education. What they saw in the data was that as these wages were rising, people weren't working that much more. And so of course, they concluded that the, the wage, uh, the hours response to wages wasn't very big. 30 years ago, uh, economists couldn't handle that extra dimension of complexity. Now we can, and so we can build it into the models, and we find that you get very different results. Now you find that uh, the young people are actually working a lot, uh, precisely because this will cause their wages to increase. And if you, uh, if you measure the value of people's time properly, uh, you, you come to the conclusion that people are actually quite responsive to the value of their time. So the value of time is the opportunity cost of spending an hour at the beach. So what could you be doing instead? Right? Well, you could be working and earning a wage, right? but at the same time you're working, you could also be acquiring human capital. If you look at some uh, young worker who is trying to work hard to impress their boss and get a promotion, and they see that there's a temporary drop in their wage, say, due to a temporary tax increase, they're more concerned with the, the uh, career prospects they'd be passing up if they, if they work less, right? So they're, they're gonna keep working hard to press their boss and get a raise in the future. On the other hand, if you take some 60-year-old who's quite near retirement, really their only concern is the current wage. If taxes rise for them, that might be the straw that induces them to just go into retirement. What I think what my work shows is that once you account for human capital, the responsiveness of hours of work to taxation is considerably higher than prior work would suggest. And this implies that we need to be more careful when we talk about top rates of taxation. The government is, is not unconstrained in setting very high tax rates and expecting that it won't lead to significant economic contractions. This puts an important constraint on the size of government. I want to be clear that I'm not uh, anti-government. Providing education, providing health care are vital functions, but we have to be very aware that in paying for them, we are going to be shrinking the size of the economic pie to a non-negligible degree, and we have to think carefully about the right balance between those two factors.